This video will show you how to do sticky headers. They're a bit different from Axia 8, uh, so please watch carefully if you have used Axia 8 before. Otherwise, if you're new to Axia 9, just follow along. So I'm going to create a sticky header. Why might we want it? Well, on a computer screen, they're handy, especially if you've got a very long scrolling website um, because you don't have to go right back up to the top to get to the navigation again. If you're going to do it for a mobile, make sure it is unobtrusive, you know, a little symbol in the corner or something like that. You don't want a huge header taking up one third of the screen so that it makes it difficult for the user to read. So getting on to how we do it. What we need to do is select everything that we want in the header. So I'm just going to use a marquee select. You can choose your selection mode in the top left. So you can either make sure it's touching anything, anything it touches it selects, or it has to totally contain everything. I'm going to choose the first just in case I half miss something. And there we go. So the first step is we need to turn this into a dynamic panel. I've mentioned before that they have magical qualities. I can do that either by right clicking and uh, hang on, I'll see if I can scroll a bit so that you can see this. There we go. Create dynamic panel is in the bottom of that. Another way you can access it is going to arrange in the menu at the top and choosing create dynamic panel there. Either way, you'll create a dynamic panel. Let's give it a name so it's nice and easy to notice in our outline pane. So I'm going to call this header. Does what it says. Okay, now a problem here is you can see how it fits the content. So I'm going to deselect that and now we'll just make this a bit bigger. There we go. Now it might not be aligned to exactly what we want it to be. We don't have to worry about stretching it just yet. We just want to figure out the vertical properties. So if I double click on that, I can now move things around. So I might want to have these down here, my links. I might want my heading to be a bit, um, a bit down as well. So it's sort of a bit more in the center of my header. And I'll just go back to the index page again. Let's get out of there. Okay, fantastic. Now, if I preview this, for starters, we can't see it um, because it's got a white background on a white page. Secondly, it's not pinned. So let's go and change some of these settings. I'm going to set the background to a light gray. It might not be that pretty, but at least we'll see it on the screen. So I go over to the style tab in the inter in the uh, sorry inspector pane and I can go down here and select uh, my fill color and I'm just going to select a light gray there. Okay, so that's the first thing done. Now if we preview, we can see it's got that background color, but it's not 100% of the width of the page. To do that, we select the dynamic panel again and click on 100% wide browser only. So that's just over here and that's only for dynamic panels, remember. So if we preview that, okay, this is looking a bit better, but it's still not sticky. We need to do one more step here. So again, selecting the dynamic panel. You see over below 100% wide browser only, we have pinned to browser. So I just have to click on that. Click. And here we go. I can't believe I just did a sound effect there. I just clicked it. Um, you just need to tick on pin to browser window. Select where you want it pinned horizontally and vertically. If it's a header, you will pin it to the top. If it's a sticky footer, you pin it to the bottom. Horizontally, that just depends on where you want it aligned to. So if you use the default left, um, it will move it all to the left. I'll show you that in a second. Um, and importantly for a header, you need this selected keep in front browser only. Um, so this is important if you want to keep your header in front so that the other content scrolls underneath it. It's why we gave it a background color. I'll just show you that now. I'm going to click OK. And if we preview this, and if I scroll down, you see how when the content goes under the header, the opacity means that we're not trying to read the content of the page 
directly underneath the text in the header otherwise it becomes impossible to read the header so this is working how we want it to work you might not want this um, header text and links aligned to the left though easy as anything to fix we can just select that go back to the pin the browser click on that and change it to center click OK and preview now just say we want to edit this uh, quite a bit um, what you can do is you see how we've got states here you can actually click through to those states and click and edit it but if you want to undo that dynamic panel all you need to do is right click and it's break away first state and that will undo that and that will break everything back to their component elements and get rid of that dynamic panel. I don't necessarily want to do that so edit, um, undo and we've got our sticky header back again. There are more complicated ways to do the sticky headers so that for instance it starts in a different point on the page and then as it goes up it will stick to the top when it gets to the top. That's more complicated and we'll deal with that later in the semester. For now this is a simple way to make a sticky header.